Hey guys, what's up? It's Chad Close here with Close Blender and CD Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about some modeling techniques. Uh, we are going to be talking about arrays, and we're going to talk a little bit about curve. Not much. But we're just going to go over it just to show another feature of an array. So here we got some, uh, just a, a stairs. So you can just increase the count and have the stairs go up. Here we kind of have a mesh, a mesh cone deal. Um, so you could have this be a weave or a chain or something like that, or not a chain, but uh, like a chain mail or something. And here we have our chain, so it's just uh, links and it just goes, and then it follows a curve that, uh, if I can edit it, that you can just kind of play around with and make it go however you want it to go. So you make it go this way, all right. So let's show you guys how to do this. Make sure you go and check out our new games at Spheric. Uh, you can go to cdgame.weebly.com to find them. Uh, we got our Spheric one, which is a new one. It's pretty fun. And there's other ones out here that you guys can go look at. All right. Let's just go into a new layer here. Let's put our 3D cursor into the center. Now. How an array works is it just pretty much duplicates the object and puts it right next to each other. So say we have just this cube here, and we come over here to the modifier tab, add modifier array. As you can see, we have fixed account, so fixed count. So if you just keep adding them, it just adds them right next to it. And either you can do a constant offset or a relative. Relative seems uh, is normally the most used one, and then you can have it based on so every one length in the x direction it'll multiply it or you do 1.1, 1.2 and so forth or you can even shrink it in. Uh, you can go in up or down. You can go left or right too. So lots of cool stuff right there. Um, you can also have it merge all the objects. Um, I'm not really going to talk about that, but it would just connect all the vertices that are touching. So let's go ahead and let's just make our staircase that I had over there. So we'll just have it go at default one. And then just we're going to scale along the y axis down. We got our limit selected, so we're just going to select them all, go up one. So we got kind of the front of the stairs going here. And then we're just going to extrude it out, extrude these out, extrude these back. And there we have it. it's a simple staircase. We're going to make it a little wider by doing scale X. I'm tabbing into edit mode by just hitting tab, or you can go down here and select. So now let's add some, and we don't want to go in that way. So we're going to put that being zero. We'll have this go one, and this will be one. So as you can see, we're up. At the right height, we want to come in closer. So we're just going to bring this down, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but mine just ends up being pretty much perfect. So we'll just go with that, and you can just keep adding, and you have an infinite staircase to heaven. So, pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So next, we will do that mesh-looking thing. So I'm just going to delete this, get it out of the way. We're just going to start off with a simple cube again. We'll scale it down by hitting S. And then we are going to scale it on the Y figure. And do that. And then we're just going to put three edge loops in here. We'll grab this up and we'll grab this down. I'm not going to make it too specific. And then we're going to duplicate that by holding Shift D, grab X. And then just bring it over here. Now we're going to select it all, Shift D to duplicate it, rotate it 90 degrees, just like that. All right, and then we're going to select one of them by hitting either by selecting them all or hitting the L button, which selects everything that's linked. We're going to rotate that 180 degrees. We're going to select this one. We're going to rotate 180 degrees. So now we got this weave going on, as you can see. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I continue is I'm going to select this and grab it and put it so right here is in the middle. 
just like that. So we'll get a good spacing going on here. Do the same thing with these. Again, I'm just hitting L, G, X to lock along the X axis and moving over. So now we got our basic weave. We'll just add an array modifier. And then we're going to add another array modifier, but instead of one, we're going to have that one be one. Add on here. So now we got this mesh going on that you can you can play around with. Um, you could uh, add a subdivision surface so it's smoother. Um, you don't want to merge here. Increase the merge distance. Oh, right here, merge. There we go. So now we got more of a smooth weave. And then again, you can scale this down really, really small and have a nice, fine mesh going on here. Um, again, when you put it up as big, my computer is just freaking out. Because this is going to be about well, yeah, 300,000 faces. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that. But that's the basics of that principle. And now we'll do that chain I had that follows the curve. So let's just go ahead and let's just go make the curve first. So we're just going to name this chain curve. And then we're just going to select them all, grab on the x axis and move it over one so the starting position is right in the middle and we're just for now we'll just extrude this and make it go like that sure. nothing too special All right so there's our curve that we got going on here not not amazing All right let's go make our change so let's add in a torus here and now all of mine are set because I just did it. But if we come down here, we see my major act radius is 0.1. Minor is going to be 0.025. 12 major segments. Minor is 6. We're just having these small. So we are going easy on the processor and the renderer. And then exterior is 1. So that's our size comparison right now. We're just going to tab into edit mode. We are going to look at it from the front by hitting 1. Shift duplicate, rotate it along the x axis. Nope. Rotate. All right, we're just going to hit three, look at it from the side, rotate, and hit 90. And then we're going to go back to the front by hitting one and just move it over like that. So now we got a simple chain link that we're going on. So now we're going to go over here and add an array modifier. And we're going to bring this down so it's overlapped. Just like, just like that. Now up to this fixed count, we're gonna go fix length. Oh, not fix length. Fit curve, and then we're gonna fit curve chain curve. So now it is as long as this curve. But now we want it to follow it. So we're gonna add another uh, uh, modifier into this deform down to curve, and we're gonna set the curve. I don't know why my computer is doing this. It keeps disappearing. But I leave it that one. So you just select the curve. So it's chain curve down here. And as you can see, now we have our chain that follows the curve. And then again, modify the chain and the chain will uh, extrude more or make more as needed and so forth. So that's pretty cool. So this has been a pretty basic tutorial on how to use the array and a little bit on the curve modifier pretty cool stuff hope you guys like subscribe and uh stay tuned for more stuff see you guys later